NVIDIA today announced a pretty cool partnership program where, in my opinion, it's going to help NVIDIA sell even more GPUs. Let me explain a little bit more in today's episode, and I also want to cover some recent AI news that I think all AI investors and pretty much NVIDIA investors should know. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So the first thing we do have is on June 27th, which is today, Truist adjusts their price target to NVIDIA to $140 from $128 and maintains a buy rating. So obviously that is very bullish in forms of stock prices. That would be what a nice 15% gain from where we're at right now so let me know what are your thoughts on this price target update now what really got me excited about today's episode is before we go any further we are now on the road to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year thank you all for the crazy support so if you haven't and are enjoying the content make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button finally if you want to support the channel a little bit more make sure to check out my special offer at fool.com slash jose now back to today's episode. NVIDIA has announced a new reference architecture for cloud providers that want to offer generative AI services to their customers. The NVIDIA Cloud Partner Reference Architecture is a blueprint for building high-performance, scalable, and secure data centers that can handle generative AI and large language models. The reference architectures enables NVIDIA Cloud Partners within the NVIDIA Partner Network to reduce the time and cost of deploying AI solutions. The architecture will also help cloud providers meet the growing demand for AI services from organizations. So the reason I enjoy this is NVIDIA has mentioned very much in the past that they are the perfect middleman to help all their customers grow at a great pace, right? So NVIDIA doesn't just sell their chips and say, hey, look, good luck selling these chips. So I think it's first important to understand kind of the business of the data center market. So first, NVIDIA makes an AI chip, right? So after they make an AI chip, they send it to companies like Supermicro, like Dell Technologies, like some of those other AI servers, and they built AI servers out of them. Now, once you have those AI servers, those AI servers get sent to data center to data centers or cloud computing companies like Microsoft, like Google, like Amazon, like OpenAI, and the list goes on and on. And then those cloud computing companies sell that, use those, use that computing power for internal workloads. Like for example, Microsoft uses it internally for their co-pilot or for OpenAI, but they also sell it to third parties or other enterprises that want to rent out NVIDIA's GPUs. So NVIDIA wants to make sure that everybody wins. And the way they want to make sure that everybody wins is by making sure that everybody's making as much money as possible. So we can kind of see first, they, this is a cloud partner reference architecture that's going to help with build scalable and secure data centers. So that's helping first the cloud server providers or their clouding companies build a huge infrastructure. But the way they're going to do it is they're going to team them up with their AI server builders, be it Supermicro, be it Oracle, be it being Dell Technologies, right? So right now, NVIDIA is helping not just themselves, but helping these huge clouding companies find ways to build huge data centers. Because at the end of the day, if they build huge data centers, they're going to want a lot of GPUs and a lot of NVIDIA's hardware solutions. Now, I think this is also very important where we're at right now, right? Where we're building like hundreds of thousand GPU data centers. So that's what we're expected to build that one server provider, like one AI server maker can't provide all those solutions. So we've seen it pretty well with, I, I believe it was, it was either Tesla, Tesla or XAI, where half of the data center was being built by Supermicro and the other half was being built by Dell Technologies. And this is where I think NVIDIA gets along, where a big clouding company or someone who needs a huge supercomputer goes to NVIDIA and says, hey, look, I want to build this huge data center. If they would have just gone maybe to Supermicro or maybe just to Dell, they would have been like, hey, look, sorry, we don't have that kind 
of solution to build it in the time frame that you want it. You're gonna have to wait a lot longer. But if you go strictly to NVIDIA right off the bat, NVIDIA can say, hey, look, I know that one of my AI server builders here and one of my AI server builders here have this type of capacity. And if they work together, they'll be able to give you the type of AI data center that you need at the time that you need. So we can see how NVIDIA is really kind of fueling this to make sure everybody gets as much money as possible and everybody gets the product that they want as soon as possible as well. Now, those cloud server provider companies, they need to also have their GPUs being used, right? Because that's how they're making money. Data centers, when you rent out their GPUs, you pay them either an hourly fee, a monthly fee, whatever being so. So NVIDIA is going out there and working with a lot of AI companies and saying, hey, look, if you need to find a cloud computing partner, we have a great list that has all of our AI solutions. So not only is NVIDIA bringing customers to the AI server makers, but they're also bringing customers to the clouding computing giants. And now these clouding computing giants are saying, hey, look, we have actually plenty of demand for our GPUs because NVIDIA and all these people are bringing customers to our end that now we're going to even order more GPUs because we're able to see that demand is there. So in, in my opinion, NVIDIA has done really well at becoming the ultimate middleman. I feel like most chip companies just sell their chips to kind of these OEMs and ODM makers and let them figure out what they're going to do, how much they're going to make and how much they're going to sell. But I think NVIDIA knows that this market is huge and they're trying to optimize as much as possible. And the best way to do that is by making sure that everybody gets a piece of the pie in their plate, because if everybody's eating, they're going to want more and more. And the way they're going to get more is by buying more NVIDIA GPUs. So if you are a clouding company, you just need to go to NVIDIA and NVIDIA will get you not only customers for you, but we'll make sure that you are built the uh, your data center or your clouding solution is built as fast as possible and as efficient as possible. Now, one thing that I actually found from this thing that I didn't know much before was NVIDIA's partner network. So NVIDIA, if you go to their NPN, just Google NVIDIA NPN, um, it's going to tell you all the partners that they have for things like cloud partners, for distributors, for global system integrators, for independent software vendors, for the list goes on and on storage partners. So I think this might be a great way if you have time to kind of get some ideas on what are some companies that can benefit from the AI space. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about AI updates. And I just want to bring these AI updates because it kind of helps us understand where maybe the AI market is going. So the first AI news I have here is Amazon's game executive says that AI will define the way one game in the future. And this gaming executive at Amazon mentions that the gaming industry and from all the other entertainment forms will have the biggest impact from AI. Um, and previously for the gaming industry, it has been driven by hardware, right? It all depends on the console generation to make sure that it has plenty of performance to be able to play that game. But this gaming industry executive believes that that is shifting now and that they think the new improvement is going to be on the software side and AI will define your game in the future. So obviously Nvidia not only has plenty of hardware solutions, but they have a lot of software solutions for the AI market. And the reason I brought that is, hey, obviously I talk about how the AI market is gonna revolutionize the space, but I believe it brings more evidence when an executive of that form of industry tells us a little bit more about it. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about is how, how much computational power is needed right now to do certain things in the AI generation space. One of the things that we're going into right now, I believe, is image and video generation. And there is kind of this open source video generation AI out there, OpenSora, and they mentioned that an RTX 3090, which is one of the top of the line GPUs of the last generations, and is still pretty expensive, can only create four second clips for with a 240p resolution. If you're not familiar, 
that sucks in forms of times and that sucks in forms of resolution and it takes about a minute for that 24 frames per second output. So this right now is just showcasing how much computational power is needed for the next phase of AI of AI generation, which I believe is going to be video generation. And if top of the line GPUs can barely make something, I think this just proves that, hey, look, we're still hardware dependent in certain markets or hardware constraint. So as long as NVIDIA continues to innovate in this space, if they continue to bring better performance, it's going to be very, very bullish for them. And we can kind of see we're still in. The final news I have is that obviously we have heard of TikTok ban um, and a company that I personally follow, Oracle and one that I own, actually has TikTok as their clouding companies. And in a recent annual report, Oracle does mention that, hey, look, if TikTok does be, does get banned, this can obviously impact Oracle's clouding business. Not something that I'm too, too worried about, but it's obviously something that can create some noise for the overall stock. There are reports from Bloomberg that estimates Oracle's revenue from TikTok could be somewhere between 500 to $800 million annually. So obviously that's some nice money there, but the way the AI market is going right now, I'm not necessarily too worried but I know a lot of people follow Oracle here. So I just wanted to kind of share my overall thoughts here. So now uh, I think that's all I have for NVIDIA. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I always get a lot of questions of, hey, Jose, what are you doing with NVIDIA? So with NVIDIA, still my biggest position. I personally am not buying at these levels. It's already my number one. So right now I'm more of just a long-term shareholder. If there's ever the opportunity, I would sell maybe one, 2% just to kind of get a little bit gains here and there but I have no intentions of selling a big position of NVIDIA anytime soon. And like I mentioned, at the same time, I really don't have any intentions of buying right now. But let me know in the comments below, what are you doing? Are you buying? Are you selling? Are you holding? Take care, have a good day, and see you all next time.